What's up guys, Brandon here. I'm here with Evan and today we're gonna do something a bit different. We're just gonna ramble on about deck building theory. This was a request by another fellow member of the Dual Masters community and I thought I'd run with it and actually address some key points. So if you have any opinions, feel free to let us know. So what we're gonna go through is the cards in deck, counts of cards, and how to build and use a curve properly. Again, this is all subjective. This is our opinions. And if you disagree, just let us know and we'll, uh, we can have some good constructive talk. So my theory was this. In Dual Masters, you pretty much had your controls, which look something like this. Then you had your aggros, which look something like this. Bombs are. Then you had your rushes, which look something like this. These are pretty much the decks that dominated the game for the most part. So that's why I decided to use these. So for your cards in deck, for a blue, black, red traditional control, I would say stick to 50. If you can go over a little bit 50, that's fine, but try not to hit 55, 60. That's when it starts getting too messy. You don't really care about your opening hands. Your main goal is to survive until you hit Omedius. That was most people's strategies. So he was your closeout card. You would also want to get to Lost Soul first. So an ideal curve in this case would be turn two, Skeeto, turn three, Hocus or Energy Stream, turn four, Cranium Clamp or Locomotor, turn five, Corral, turn six, Blizzard of Spears, turn seven, Lost Soul. Then you could just stall out your opponent, play your Velarikas, search for your Bulmedius, destroy their field with Bazigazil, and you're pretty much game controlled. So here we have the Bombazar list. This is the Ben Fluffgut list, the person who won the 2006 uh, Continental Championships. He played 42 cards, but we actually cut the Essence Elves from this because we didn't really like Essence Elf in here. And for argument's sake, I think it makes this deck a better fit for this video. So this deck, we pretty much have four copies of 10 cards in here, except for Scarlet Sky Terror and Twin Cannon Sky Terror. So pretty much it's 11 cards, four copies of most of them. All you wanna do is just slam powerful bodies Go plus with Aqua Hocus, Bronze Arm Tribe, Energy Stream, and curve out to Bombazar. That's your ideal curve. This deck is so powerful that the curve doesn't really matter here much, so this is an outlier. So we're not really gonna talk about this deck much. So here we have a traditional red-green rush. Very powerful deck. A lot of people actually didn't play many triggers. They didn't play Burst Shot in our competitive Dual Masters career. They only really played Terror Pit. They didn't play much Surfer either. They seemed to really like Corral. So this deck was actually quite strong and quite underplayed considering how powerful it was. So I'd say stick to 40. Again, we got three, the only three of in here I think is Rickaboo Screwdriver and Volcanic Arrows and only two of is the Dismantler. Other than that, everything is a four of. Very consistent. For your aggros, you wanna stay to three and four copies per card if that's your main goal to get in and finish quick you want your starting hands to be as strong as possible so for my next discussion i want to talk about copies of a card so in a deck you can play four copies three two or one in kajudo it was only three copies max but for dual masters it's four so for your four ofs those are your centerpieces they're the essential cards that allow the deck to function and they're key to the win condition they're almost never bad. So if you want an example, look at something like Aqua Hocus. Look at something like Tyra Pit. When have you actually drawn these and said, this card is bad right now. This card does not help me at all. Not often, right? Soul Swap. How often do you see less than four copies in a deck? Not often. These are cards that are never bad. Some of these cards can border on being overpowered or broken. So those are cards you just want to slam your deck with and you're never sad to see them, so to say. So your three ofs, your three ofs in my opinion, are going to be cards that are just as powerful as your four of slot and important, but they're usually gonna be higher costed. Cards that I would consider for a three of would be maybe Apoc Vise, Lost Soul, Velirica Dragon, maybe Miraculous Plague is a three of sometimes. Very powerful cards, but they're so expensive that throughout the game, you're eventually going to see at least one copy as the game progresses naturally. So for your two ofs, ideally, those are more of your combo pieces. Um, they're sometimes great, but they can also sometimes be clunky. Something like a Mana Nexus, which is great late game, especially against uh, this main offender here. He can, Mana Nexus can win games. 
but other than that, you really want to stay away. Miraculous Meltdown, Scarlet Sky Terror, Hopeless Vortex, stuff like that. Good tulips that can be very powerful sometimes, but other times they're kind of man. Then you got your one of your techie cards, as the Yu-Gi-Oh players used to say. They're often the silver bullets, cards that can win a matchup against certain archetypes, but they're otherwise useless against a lot of other decks. It's also reserved for searchers too. So for Crystal Memory, cards that act as other cards, like Dark Reversal, that's what I would call techie. An ultimate troll card. This card is great against aggro and rush, but against other controls, it's 